G'day, I was just digging in um, the veggie garden and came across um, two very nice uh, size worms. Now, if um, you have similar soil to this uh, and you're able to just take uh, one dig within, within your garden and find a number of uh, earthworms, it will indicate that your soil is um, very healthy and robust with um, soil ecology. In this video, we'll be looking at the benefits of um, these earthworms and how um, essentially they function within our soil and how uh, we can improve uh, their population size. My name is Till Simmons uh, from Agrisol and this is Agriculture Explained. Earthworms are a great way to build healthy soil. If you see earthworms in your veggie garden or in the soil on your farm, it will indicate that you have healthy functioning soil. Essentially what earthworms do is they come across say a bit of soil with bits of organic matter in there and they will pretty much uh, move through the soil and eat um, this organic matter. Now over time um, they'll do this a lot and pretty much uh, make tunnels or through the soil. While doing this they're, they're eating all that organic matter. Now as they eat this organic matter they digest it and they concentrate the nutrients and then they essentially poop it out as humus. Now humus is a really nutrient dense uh, substance and um, a lot of the compounds in um, humus is uh, readily available for plants to absorb. So as a result, this humus, or uh, also called uh, worm castings, is a great way of giving nutrients to our uh, plants by recycling the organic matter already in our soil. So we can see that with the benefits of earthworms, um, they increase the nutrients. So as we said over here, it just takes organic matter and the nutrients already in that, and it converts it into a more uh, readily available form. So it increases nutrients availability. As the worms move through the soil, it creates these tunnels. Now these tunnels uh, increase the uh, drainage of our soil. So it reduces, say, water logging. And it also increases uh, the gas exchange. So gas is allowed to uh, move through these tunnels and that can um, help to aerate uh, some of the soil. Next is that the castings or the humus release that will bond um, to soil particles and allow them to come together. So that will increase the soil structure um, that has a number of uh, benefits associated with that, such as water holding capacity. And the humus itself is also have a high uh, cannot exchange capacity. So it will help to um, exchange nutrients to the plant. And lastly with this is that we're going to increase our soil organic matter. And as we know with the soil organic matter video, we have a heap of benefits uh, with that. So earthworms contribute so much benefit to our soil. Um, and without any extra work to uh, work to say um, on our half. We're just going to make sure that we allow for a healthy environment and they will pretty much uh, contribute all these really beneficial aspects to our soil. Now if you don't have many earthworms in your soil it may be due to some practices uh, or cultural practices that you're um, using on your either farm or veggie garden. Now some of these deter uh, earthworms from uh, living in soil just because they don't like it. Um, so what we can do to increase earthworms is to make sure we have a pH above four and a half. Anything below that's too acidic for them and they're not going to like it. So to do this, we just test our soil and then make corrections. So you can either add uh, lime to raise the pH uh, or uh, sometimes pH, uh, a low pH can be the result of too much uh, chemical fertilizer applications. So a long-term solution is we can reduce um, our inorganic fertilizer application. Now the earthworms need something to eat, so we can do that um, by increasing the organic matter. This will promote them to an area because there's, there's feed there, so they're gonna wanna be there. We can increase the organic matter within our soil by either uh, um, planting in a green manure crop. So you just plant a bunch of uh, really leafy uh, plants, pretty much, so like um, oats or sorghum, uh, and then uh, plant that all back. Or just allowing, uh, you don't have to plant it back, but you could also graze that um, uh, with some livestock and then uh, the manure, it will increase the organic matter. We want to uh, decrease fertilizers. So as I said with the increase in pH from inorganic fertilizers, so reducing fertilizer and definitely the more harsh uh, fertilizers will promote earthworm um, population and activity. And that's just because a lot of earthworms are really sensitive to their environment. So any harsh chemicals uh, will deter them from living there. Uh, as well as pesticides, pesticides can really harm our earthworms. Um, and anything that will hurt, harm the earthworms, they, they don't want to live in that area. So um, we want to reduce that. Next, we want to uh, reduce cultivation. Now, cultivation disturbs the soil and 
Um, earthworms don't really like disturbing the soil too much, so they're not going to want to be in areas that um, are frequently cultivated. Next, we're going to want to reduce compaction. Now, it, earthworms find it hard to move through uh, compacted soil. So again, they're not going to want to be there if they can't move through and access uh, their food source. So um, we can reduce compaction. Um, there's, there's a number of different ways we can reduce compaction and it does depend on what type of enterprise you're running. But moving to um, like a, a no-till or reduced till where we're um, going over the soil less amounts of time with our uh, tractors and whatnot, that will reduce compaction from that. There's a couple of other ways we can uh, uh, reduce compaction naturally with um, using perennial plants. That will permeate deep roots into the soil profile and break up uh, that compaction. Otherwise, if you have really bad compaction, what you can do is uh, just go through and it is a, a tilling method, but you get a, um, a ripper and they pretty much just rip up the compaction. But the most important thing with that is that once you rip it up, you want to make sure you maintain um, no compaction. So then you implement different strategies to make sure that you don't reintroduce compaction into the soil. And lastly, we want to increase drainage because worms don't like super waterlogged environments. Now it is a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If we increase drainage, we're going to promote worms to increase drainage, which will increase drainage. And so we get more worms. So it's, um, it's a positive feedback loop. The better you uh, improve your soil, the more worms you'll pretty much uh, attract to your soil, which will improve your soil, which will attract more worms. So once you start getting the, the ball moving with this, you'll see that um, there's a rapid increase in, I guess, soil fertility. Now, another um, point that I didn't write up here is that earthworms need um, a soil moisture above uh, 20%. So making sure that you have uh, a fair bit of water moisture in your soil to allow uh, earthworms to pretty much uh, be in that environment that they really like. And this is also because earthworms can dry it really easily. Um, so making sure that we have nice moist soil um, will ensure that they don't dry out. Now that's mostly it about the fundamentals of earthworms. Another important note that I forgot to talk about in here is that if an uh, earthworm uh, dies, say they're, they're digging along and they, they just die, their um, bodies pretty much decompose and then uh, become uh, the nutrients in, the, in their bodies will become available to their plant. So there's no downside to having earthworms. Um, they're really beneficial for our soil and we want to try and promote them as much as we can to really uh, build our healthy soil. Now one last thing I'll mention with uh, earthworms is that there's uh, different earthworms for say the worms in your uh, garden or in the soil in your farm and the worms in say a uh, worm bin. There's many differences with uh, the worms in your in your garden and a worm farm but generally they they um, serve the same purpose and, and general role except there's a couple of management differences uh, to promote their um, functionality. That's it about earthworms. Make sure to go out into your garden and uh, just dig up a bit of soil to see if they're there. If you're able to dig up just a small portion and there are a couple earthworms in there, that will indicate that essentially you have really healthy uh, soil or you're on the way to um, building healthy soil. If you can't see any um, earthworms, uh, even if you've dug up the whole garden, it might uh, suggest to you that you might need to change a couple of different things about how you um, farm or different uh, practices that you use. If you like learning about this stuff, uh, make sure to check out some of our other videos. We have some on animal production and plant production, and we even have some on regenerative agriculture. So make sure to check that out. I think building healthy soil is fundamental to plant health uh, and human health, and I think um, building healthy soil is the way um, to that. My name is Till Simmons from Agrisol, uh, and this is Agriculture Explained. Thanks for watching.